As we know, salinity is the concentration of salt in our land or waters. We measure salinity in grams per litre, but to put this into a perspective, we convert it to a percentage. For example, in the seas around us, there is around 32 grams per litre, or 3.2%. In the Murray River and surrounding regions, managing salinity is a big challenge. If not kept under control, salinity can affect plant life, biodiversity and agricultural stability. What effect do you think the Murray and Coorong being saline has on the surrounding ecosystem? One of the main effects it has is on the soil. If the water in the soil around the roots of the plants is high in salt content, because of osmosis, the water in the plants wants to move to the concentrated solution in the soil, meaning the plants get dehydrated and cannot get any nutrients most notably nitrogen. It also influences animal life. If the water is too salty, it is useless as a water source for most of the animals in the area. The Coorong is a lagoon located along the coast of South Australia. It is connected to the Murray through Lake Alexandrina and is home to a delicate ecosystem of wildlife. Normally, the constant flow of the Murray would be responsible for flushing the Coorong and keeping its salinity in an appropriate level. However, Due to the constant overpumping of the Murray for agricultural and residential use, the flow of the Murray has been greatly reduced, resulting in the Coorong not being flushed properly. This has led to a steep increase in the salinity of the lagoon. Throughout the past decade, the South Lagoon has reached levels as high as 150 grams per litre. To put this into perspective, the average salinity of the ocean is around 33 grams per litre. This makes the Coorong classify as a hypersaline water body. As a result of this hypersalinity, blue-green algae now grows proficiently in the Coorong. Blue-green algae is poisonous to a lot of the local wildlife and uses up vital nutrients in the soil. When you visit the Coorong, you will probably notice this unpleasant smell. That is the smell of the blue-green algae. The situation is similar for the Murray itself. One of the biggest sources for overpumping is floodplain harvesting. In this context, floodplain harvesting is when water is collected from the Murray Darling floodplains and stored for later use. Closer to the source, in New South Wales, this practice is particularly common. This has led to significant reductions in the river's flow downstream, and not only does it have an impact on the surrounding ecosystem, but also on the remote Aboriginal communities who have for many generations relied on the Murray for food, drinking water and cultural practices. Another reason for higher saline levels is deforestation. Deep under the ground in the Murray-Darling Basin there is a layer of naturally salty groundwater and when there are trees and vegetation on the surface they collect a lot of the rainwater and not as much is soaked into the soil but by clearing the area of vegetation we allow much more water to move through the soil into the groundwater layer increasing the flow rate causing much more of the salty water to flow into the river. This can be helped by revegetating the area. Salt grow hybrids are a hybrid combination of the eucalypts E. camaldolensis, E. grandis and E. globulus. These eucalypts have the salt to tolerance of E. camaldolensis and the high wood quality and speedy growth rates of E. grandis and E. globulus. From studies done in the 90s and early 2000s in Victoria and New South Wales, it was found to provide exceptionally good vegetation in areas of high salinity. These could be planted around the Murray-Darling Basin to help restore the deforested areas. Another method of reducing salt in the water are salt interception schemes, where salty water is pumped up from the groundwater layer and is sent to shallow ponds where the water is evaporated off and later rains down on the river as fresh water. The salt can then be sent off for other uses. In conclusion, the high saline levels in the Murray River and Coorong are big issues and they must be addressed. But unfortunately, as an individual, there isn't much we can do other than try our best to get our government's attention. The political party you vote for, the local initiatives you join and the products you choose to buy from all contribute. So, try to make educational choices in all these areas. If you want to learn more about the saline levels in the Murray River or the Coorong, go to any of these links on the screen now.